Welcome to another edition in the Measurement Solutions Full Workflow Tutorial Series. Today we're presenting a walkthrough on how to leverage 3D scanners for quality control purposes. One of the challenges that companies face with traditional methods of measurement is often the time taken to comprehensively measure a component. This can often create a bottleneck in the production process, costing a significant amount of time and potentially delayed shipping and unexpected NCRs. To help you gain an understanding of how 3D scanning can therefore alleviate these challenges, this video is designed to demonstrate the capabilities and benefits of 3D scanning for inspection and quality control. Within a very short and fully programmable workflow, from start to finish, inspection for this part takes less than 18 minutes. In this section, we are 3D scanning a rough casting of a transmission casting, which requires 3D inspection before moving on to the next manufacturing process. 3D scanning is more than just an ISR tool. It provides quality assurance throughout the process of manufacture and allows you to capture defects or changes in your part or process at the very early stages and throughout your entire production process. It's important to recognize that the technology you utilize in your inspection workflows is also traceable to national standards and meets your own internal ISO requirements. In this case, we're utilizing the Creoform HandyScan, which adheres to the strict VDI VDE 2634 standard and is accredited within an ISO 17025 laboratory. Expected accuracy is 25 microns and 1.3 million points per second with this system. Capable of scanning small to large areas, the HandyScan also offers the user the flexibility to be transported onto the shop floor. Built to measure in real-world working environment, the HandyScan is portable, temperature stable and completely at home when dealing with any part vibration or movement. One of the additional features on the HandyScan is a single laser line mode. This allows us to capture detail in hard to reach areas where traditional laser scanners or fringe projection systems would struggle. It's a particularly handy tool for getting into those teeth pockets, or in this case, between the different fins. Inspecting your part is as simple as digitally spray painting your component, and with live feedback of your surface, it is very easy to see what you have and haven't measured. Not only is the system easy to operate, it is also accurate and repeatable across multiple users. For a complete hands-off approach to measurement, Creoform also offers the fully autonomous QBAR system, which gives users the flexibility to measure parts without input from an operator. This is a great way for building inspection into your production lines and helping to increase throughput on the shop floor. To further help with the conversion in the next section, we will utilize some of the cleanup tools in the software, including the ability to automatically detect the background table, as well as remove any patches of data that is isolated from the main scan. In this case, we use a mode called Add Clipping Plane, whereby we select the table surface and automatically filter this from the scan. With our unwanted data now removed from the main body of the scan, let's look at the last step towards getting our file ready for inspection. Traditional laser scanning methods would scan as a point cloud. With Creoform's VX elements, we have something called direct instant meshing. Our finalize button effectively does two things. One, it removes targets associated with the part, and two, it globally registers all of our scan data into a single layer mesh file. It is at this point that the end user can decide which software they prefer for analyzing the data. VX Elements is compatible with many of the third-party softwares in the market and has direct interfacing for the likes of Polyworks and Metrolog. In this next section of the video, we're going to be using Creoform's own inspection platform called VX Inspect. It is here that we're going to bring in our CAD file, align the data, color map, check our dimensions and produce our report. With our scan now ready for inspection, let's input the CAD file. VX Inspect allows input of IGES, STEP, STL and OBJ format files. With one click, we are able to align the scan data directly to the CAD nominal, 
create a color deviation map and have a quick visualization of what the part is currently like in relation to the CAD. One of the great things about scan data is the ability to quickly visualize whether your part is within tolerance or not. Within VX Inspect, we can adjust our search parameters for our color deviation map, including changing things like the tolerance and upper and lower values. Effectively, we have a scale where everything within green is within tolerance. Red would be plus material, blue would be negative material. As you can see here, we also have the option to change how scaling is created. With our values updated, let's have a look at the data. It seems that we have quite a few red spots, additional material, blue negative material. Majority of the opponent, however, seems to be within tolerance. Of course, this is based off of best fit alignment. So according to our drawing, let's generate our datum based features. One of the great things about VX Inspect is the ability to create data very quickly. As you can see, we've already generated the top face as datum A, but we're now selecting the cylinder as our datum B face. According to the drawing, our final datum face is towards the back of the transmission casing. To select this data, VX Inspect will automatically generate data based on their current alignment. In this case, we want to override and be a little bit more discreet in how much information we're using for our data face. With our Select by Normal tool, we are able to select how much data we want to use to generate the geometrical feature. This is a similar process to that of a CMM. You can either use 10 points or use 100 points to generate your plane. In this case, we're allowing the software to select based on a similar flatness value. With our datum features now created, let's realign the scan to the CAD file. This is a simple process, create a new alignment, select the three datums we generated and realign to those features. Now that our scan is in the correct coordinate system, let's look at regenerating our color deviation map based on the new alignment. We're going to use the same settings as before, with a tolerance of plus or minus one millimeter. As you'll notice, our color deviation map is now significantly different from the very first best fit alignment. This is now a true representation of our part in relation to the data cord system on the drawing. As we start to build up our report, we're going to be using some of the features within VX Inspect. One of the first ones we're going to use here is the ability to label features at any point in the process. Likewise, we're going to then take a snapshot of these data features and add them to our report. With our initial view created, let's add some additional snapshots to our report. We're going to add in a front page as shown. You may also want to consider adding in some orthographic views. So that's what we're going to do here. Pan, rotate and fit them to the screen. One thing we can also do is add additional stickers to our screen thumbs. The stickers are a particularly helpful way of interrogating the data further. Wherever we click, we're going to have a measured value away from the CAD number. These can be random points as we're selecting here, or could be known XYZ positions against your drawing. Now that we've created our stickers, let's add a snapshot and put this into our report. One of the great things about visualizing data in different viewpoints like this is that it allows customers to see exactly what's happening to their part. Rather than just receiving a list of text or dimensional check data, we actually have known positions and images relating to that information. It's a great way of visualizing your inspection reports. Up until this point, most of our analysis has been created in the 3D viewpoint. 
However, it may be helpful to consider a 2D environment to work in. To do this, we're going to select the top face, offset down 5mm, and create a cross section that will digitally slice the CAD and the scan data at the same time. This is a great way of visualizing information. The cross section tool is a particularly helpful function. Firstly, you can see that the white data is in fact our CAD nominal, and we are visually able to see where the points are lying on the surface of this particular slice. To help us analyze this further, we're going to create some stickers as we did before. This will be used to create a snapshot. The cross section tool can be used to check things like wall thickness or even potentially interference between two different components. In this case, we've created a single cross section on our part. However, we do have the option of creating as many as we like in multiple positions, both linearly and radially. Now that we've created our stickers, let's snapshot that and put in our report. The tool also has the ability to create geometrical features on the cross section. These can be things like circles, lines, points, slots, etc. As an example, we're going to create two circular base features and then measure the distance between the two centers. Let's now use the distance selection tool to measure the length between circle 1 center and circle 2 center. In this case, we're interested in the x and y position only, and we'll remove the 3D dimension from our report. With VX Inspect, it's really quick to identify some things out of tolerance. With our circle 2, you can see that it's been highlighted in red. In this case, the diameter is out by 1.494 millimeters. We're going to create some stickers to help us identify that and include that into our report. As before, let's now snapshot. Let's now explore some of the additional features within VX Elements. It may be as a pre-machined surface that you want to know how much material to take off this top face. Using our grid selection tool, we can quickly identify points across the entire surface. As before, we'll add that as a snapshot and put it into our report. One of the misconceptions about 3D scanners is that certain geometrical features, such as hole positions, are particularly hard to measure. Inside VX Inspect, we're going to show you how we would do that. As with any metrology tool, it is always important to measure the side wall of your hole rather than the edge. In this case, we're going to select a cylinder base feature and measure that side wall with our selection tool. With our first hole measured, let's move over to the second feature. It is always good practice to have at least two thirds of a side wall available for measuring. In this case, we're going to use the measure select tool just to double check that we have enough information there available to us. Having looked at the dimensions though, and a diameter of less than 50 micron deviation, I'm pretty confident that the information we have selected is good. As previously shown in our cross section function, let's use the distance tool to measure the center positions. We're looking for the value in the x direction. Now that we've created our dimension, let's add a sticker and put a snapshot into our report. In this case, we're going to use some of the additional features for viewing our data. We're going to hide the CAD file and view the scan as a transparent surface. Hopefully by now you would have been able to see how intuitive VX Inspect is with dealing with scan data for inspection and likewise how you can implement that into your manufacturing process. One of the common things that we're starting to see across our customer base is the implementation of GDNT within drawing standards. GDNT stands for Geometrical Dimensional Torrency and is very common within the automotive and aerospace industry. 
in this case, we're going to use VX Inspect to show you how we would do our geometric wall tolerancing. As an example, we're going to measure a flatness GDMT collar for this top face. It's as simple as selecting the GDMT standard that we require and matching it to the drawing symbols. previously shown, let's now create a sticker callout for our feature and snapshot that into our report. So far we have only explored a very small percentage of what VX Suspect can achieve. For time's sake, let's have a look at all these features that we've measured and how we report that out in VX Suspect. Now that we've finished measuring our part, let's look at inputting some data into the fields on the left hand side. These will be used in the generation of our report. Things like part, serial number, date, time, customer name can all be added into these fields. Last but not least, let's export our report into Excel format and save that as a PDF. It's important to realize at this point that everything we've done is available as a sequence program. This means that our alignments, features that we've measured, color deviation map, even our stickers and snapshots are fully recorded into one program. When it comes to measuring this part again in the future, or potentially as a batch measurement, we simply open up the program, press play on the scanner, and the report will be automatically generated for us. Well, many thanks for watching our tutorial on how to use 3D scanning for inspection and quality control purposes. I hope that you found the video particularly helpful, and if you want to know any more information about the software or hardware, please feel free to drop us a message on LinkedIn or visit our website at www.measurement-solutions.co.uk. Likewise, please follow us on all our social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Many thanks for watching.